some people might be thinking, well, okay, this locks me into the situation where in order to feel good, I have to, I'm, I'm on this treadmill where I have to keep doing these things to generate my spurt of dopamine and my spurt of serotonin and my spurt of, of oxytocin and so on. Um, maybe that could be viewed by some people as almost a disheartening feeling like, oh, you know, why can't I just be happy? Why do I have to continue to do all this stuff? What, what's a healthy way of, of sort of coming to terms with that situation? Well, the first step is what you said of putting it that question into your conscious brain, which takes it out of your nonverbal mammal brain. With the mammal brain is saying, do more stuff. I want more of that fabulous feeling. Mm. Um, now, a simple example is the person who runs a marathon and then afterwards you have a letdown and the only way they could think of getting out of it is to run another marathon. And you know this famous example of a person who starts up a business and they, they work 16 hours a day and they're exhausted and then they sell the business for a lot of money. They don't need to work, but then they start up another business. And frankly, you know, as soon as I write a book, I would love to write another book. So um, part of it is that we want the dopamine naturally and we're seeking it in the way we know because we don't know other ways to get it. So one is to give yourself some freedom to explore new ways of getting it. And the way I explain that in the book is um, if you have this piece of music that you just love and you feel so good to that when you listen to it, but if you listen to it every minute of every day, it would not turn you on anymore. And then you'd have to find a new piece of music that you love, but you don't feel it. So you have to hear it maybe, you know, 20 times before it becomes familiar enough, but not too familiar. Mm -hmm. And that's the sweet spot that we're always looking for. And so if you don't invest in queuing up that new activity, then that old activity is all you have. Um, so that's... Um, a big part of it and what I forgot the other. Um, uh, oh, so instead of just focusing on dopamine that you can focus on the other chemicals, but most people are not going to want to do that because you're really using this obsession with this activity to distract you from the pain of social disappointments. So the big one is to understand that your social pain was wired in adolescence. And again, to take it with a grain of salt to say that's just a pathway, you could build new social pathways and become aware that that feeling of rejection is something you're creating internally. And you could build a new pathway to be more casual and lighthearted and not have such a adolescent life or death sense about social interactions. And then you'll start enjoying more of a variety of things so that you won't be so focused on that next big dopamine spurt. 